Top of the morning to you boys. So the wind, I can already hear it blowing and that means it's probably gonna blow like 25 mile an hour today. Awesome. Got a little tech warehouse we're in today. Uh, Kytex, the absolute winter killer, DT6s, uh, DT8s, little brighter color for kind of that dirty water situation. Best cheap budget line ever, Seaguar Red Label. Um, oh, and of course it is winter, so everybody needs a blade bait. Oh, other way, to make evolved. If you are storing Kytex or any kind of swim bait, I got these Bass Mafia bags. Absolutely, the bag is the best way to store these things because you can just slide them in because they don't fit in anything. I don't know if you've had that experience, but then uh, zip it on up and throw it in the boat. Let's go, you ready to go fishing? Well, let's go, come on. Bug, do you know what noodle dicking is? Do you know what noodle dicking is? No, no, no go. Okay, well, just hold on. So, how many of you guys know what noodle dicking is? Yeah, down in the comments box. I'm gonna show you how to noodle dick, and I promise you won't end up in jail. It, it, kind of promise, 75%. So, noodle dicking is not only a very fun word to say, just say it like it's fun. Noodle dicking, you know? Like, hey, I'm gonna go noodle dicking today. <laughs> You know how sometimes like a word completely describes an action? Noodle dicking is this. So you guys know how much I like flipping, right? But what I've been doing is playing around with like noodle dick flipping. And it's something that I'm gonna show you today. And basically it involves, instead of flipping cover and pitching and making little short casts to cover, structure things along those lines, you're actually flipping a fish. And we're using forward facing sonar, we're using active target. It's a lot like flipping. Sometimes you gotta do a little kind of nuanced pop. You gotta do all these little sort of like tweaks and changes based upon the attitude and the way the fish are set up. And that's what I love about it. Everybody hates forward-facing sonar, but it's opened up a whole new avenue for me to basically flip and pitch, which I absolutely love. So I'm loving it, dude. Baits you can noodle dick with. Got a Ned Rig that's a Power Ned and a Clint Davis um, Nichols Ned Head. This guy, which is the one that is not out yet, that's a Sonar Tricks from Bass Tricks. It's basically a Demiki style rig. And of course, the old trusty Aaron Martin's drop shot. You might see some other baits that we're gonna play with. You can do it kind of with a Kytec and a ball head, but those are the general setups. You'll notice they're all on spinning tackle. It's kind of a light line deal. We got clear water, we got cold conditions, fish are a little bit finicky. So we're, we're finessing it, which makes it so much more fun, dude. The drag buzzes all the time. All right, Bob, you wanna go frolic? Okay. So the first thing you need to start with when it comes to doing this is this stuff right here. And anybody who knows how to read sonar knows exactly what that is. Those are giant balls of bait. Now the bonus is that's a bass right there. Might be a couple like smaller bass right there. And there's also some brush on the bottom. Ironically, we're not even fishing the, the brush. Like the brush is just an added feature, maybe something that draws the fish, but the bait is the primary key. Cause basically you're looking for fish that are absolutely just chasing bait or they're roaming around trying to eat. So if that bait isn't there, the bass aren't gonna be there. He came up and got it. I don't know how big he is. Not very, but he's a star. Kind of a unique little design. I, I throw some chartreuse on the, on the gill plate and then on the tail, because the water's a little bit dirty and this is a very visual presentation. That might be a better one. He just snatched it. I got an Aaron Martin's um, G-Force drop shot hook, and um, it's nice because it's stout enough to handle bigger fish, but dude, if they touch that bait, they're getting hooked. Yeah, that's a solid one. Not a giant, but dude, we'll take that all day. It's about a bait. Oh, actually, that is a pretty big one. Two and a half pound spot, flipping, and there's more on the graph, dude. Look at that. That's all we're doing is like pretend that's vegetation and pitch to it. 
it's so simple but it's so much fun and then the art is figuring out kind of how to present your bait correctly and uh really trigger them so this is a kai tech um i think it's like the easy shad or something you can use any like little straight tail worm or like a, i prefer the straight tail like shad style baits like this and i'm just nose hooking it um this is eight pound fluorocarbon sniper i got it on a 7.4 ks2 elite medium little longer rod because it helps to pick up the line and then you just nose hook it that's that aaron martin's hook three eighths ounce weight but this is the little trick that i do so once she's nose hooked i take out this is an old dt8 box right here and i just lay it on that box and i grab one of these uh just a chartreuse marker and i just want to get a little on the tail because the water's got a little bit of color on it so we're not going crazy that's why i don't use the dipping stuff and then the other thing is little on the gill plate just so you know since it is such a short sh like hook i want them to bite it at the hook right there and that kind of puts a little target on it. Just drifting it. Sometimes that presentation's a little bit different. And I was basically just drifting the drop shot with him. I don't know how big this one is. He's pulling kind of hard. Oh, it's a, oh, dude, it's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. I should not boat flip you, but I'm going to. <laughs> oh, spider bass, spider bass. How about that voice? Two and change. But sometimes it's a, like you can do a lot of things. You can jiggle it, you know, nothing wrong with jigglers, but you can also drift it. So you kind of like dead stick it and you, you just drift it down there and let it pendle them down. A lot like what we do with those Kytex swim baits. Get. I want to be a better one. Got it right on the head. It's a grown one right there, boy. Get in here. How about it, boys? Five more with this one. Wish your boys would have been a little more apt to bite a minute ago. Two and a half, three pounder. Feels better. Oh, yes, Trey. Oh, just an angry spotted bass. Let me come on in. Whoa. That's a decent one. That's a big old. We struggled with the old the old drop shot, so we got out the net and did some of that the old needle dicking, boys. And we needle dicked us up a chunk. <laughs> So it's a pretty cool way to fish, right? It's a lot like flipping in the sense that you're going to a target every time you pitch out. And it's a lot like flipping in the same sense that you're gonna catch some of the fish and you're not gonna catch others. And you really need to figure out that nuance. You know, I call it noodle dicking jokingly, but really there's something to it because when I'm noodle dicking, when I'm kind of flipping, I, I'm like pumping the bait. You know, like I, I'm suspending the bait. And you do the same thing with these lures. Today, it went from sort of like doing the jiggle to just kind of holding it there and letting it pendle them down to and through those fish. And you get that feel just by watching your sonar and watching how they react to the bait. It's, it's super informative and it's intense too. The main baits that I use for this are all on spinning setups. I like a drop shot a Demiki style rig, and then a Ned rig if they're on the bottom. They're all kind of finesse approaches. The reason I do that is because that lighter line, it gets down to the bottom easier. This is sort of like a picking off kind of deal, and usually you're doing it in open water, so you don't need super heavy braid. One thing I'll tell you though, is you do want braid as backing. Always run to a leader, because a lot of times these fish will bite in a very awkward way, and the only thing you can do is kind of lift your rod, and that's what sets the hook, and that no stretch line really helps you to do that. So the last thing 
when it comes to baits is remember this is kind of flipping. You want your bait down there, you're getting a reaction even if you're noodle dicking the bait a little bit. So you want to go with heavier weights, especially if you're fishing deeper water. We fished anywhere from 20 to 45, 50 feet today. And so getting that bait down there, the other key is, is these fish are moving around a lot, especially we caught spotted bass today, but even the largemouth, they're moving, they're following bait. Maybe they're not moving super fast, but to keep track of them with the active target and get your bait down there fast, you need to use heavier weights. So for instance, with the drop shot, I'm running a three eighths ounce, I'll go up to a half ounce. In maybe 10 foot, 12 foot of water, I'll go down to a quarter ounce. With the Domeki rig, three eighths. Uh, you know, maybe 10, 12 foot of water, I'll go down to a quarter, but that three eighths is pretty standard. On the Ned, Ned's a little bit lighter. It's a three sixteenths. Usually when I see those fish on the bottom and I'm kind of noodle dicking and making those short casts to them, they usually stay put when they're they're sort of related to the bottom. It's those open water fish that are, that are really moving the most. So three sixteenths, I like doing a Clint Davis. It's a little smaller hook Ned. Um, basically, it, it allows me to hook up easier. It, it's as simple as that. A lot of times these fish nip at it, or like I said, you don't know they're on there. So all you need to do is pull on that rod. It's an easy hook set and you're in open water. So you don't got to worry too much about cover in most situations. So last thing I'm going to tell you, you're not going to catch everything that you see. It's just a reality, dude. But that's why you got to kind of look at it as a flipping or a punching mentality. You're making drops. It's all about number of drops, smart drops. You don't want to just stupidly like fling your bait out. You know, you want to drop to those fish or around things or bait where, where you think those fish would be located, but you're going to make a lot of drops and you're not going to, the majority of fish you're not going to catch. It's just the reality. Just draw something from each fish that you drop on. You know, how did they move? Did they react to the bait? Did they run away from it? Maybe you need to change colors. Did they go down to the bait? All right. Well, maybe it's about the fall, you know, um, did you suspend the bait? Did you kind of just hold it and let it pendulum them down? And did they follow it? It's not just about catching them on it. It's about actually using that information to sort of tighten up your pattern and tweak it so that you're getting more bites and catching more fish. I hope you guys enjoyed this video for all the forward facing sonar haters out there. Please drop your comments below. I love reading them because the reality is I, whether you like it or not, forward facing sonar isn't going away. They're not just going to remove it from the market. It's another tool in our arsenal. It's something that expands our knowledge of the way the fish behave. And it's freaking cool, dude. You figure out some new patterns. Like I'm literally flipping in winter which I never thought I'd be doing other than in Florida. So I'm pitching to fish, seeing how they react, learning stuff. It is a bunch of fun. Hit that like and subscribe button though. We'll see you back out on the water. I'm gonna give dog a pat for you and I'm gonna go back fishing.